Well, do the bulls again negate bad news? Do they come back? Do the buyers come back and take Microsoft Green? Do they take Google Play? Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessOfTrader.com nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is doing well. Uh, again, market continues to uh, digest earnings. Obviously, technology uh, really kicked off with uh, Netflix, with IBM last week. And today, we started kicking off like the really big uh, heavyweights. Not Nothing that obviously taken away from Netflix or IBM, but Microsoft, Google, uh, Chipotle, they were de definitely the bigger stars uh, on the stage. We'll get to them in a second. But overall, kind of what we discussed last night, uh, Bulls first close uh, over this 277, 278 level on the queues. If you watched last night's video, we talked about a measure potential to this 283, 284 level. As you can see, Bulls did their job. Very, very impressive. Uh, as we continue to note and kind of detail that every single day up to the last few days, the Bulls did an incredibly good job uh, digesting bad news and kind of discarding bad news to the side. And here we are. Now the question is, can they continue? If you guys remember last quarter, there was a really big run, really, really tr tremendous run in the market uh, during earnings season. And both Google and Microsoft, you guys recall, uh, they both missed their top and bottom line results. But the fact that we were above the 50-day moving average the markets didn't really care. It was more about the sentiment. So unless the company used the word bankruptcy uh, at that time because the selling was so aggressive for the previous uh, three, four months, they just negated every single bad news and the market went higher and those stocks went higher. Well, this was a little bit of a different picture today. Um, so you had Google and Microsoft come out with earnings. Um, you know, as you can imagine, they weren't going to be great. But I, I don't think any stock that reported yesterday, today, tomorrow, or next Thursday is going to re report great earnings based on the macro effect. Everybody understands the economy is not where they want. Everybody gets that. But I think a lot of companies are definitely getting this mulligan. A lot of the semiconductors, everybody knows the supply chain issues. Everybody gets it, right? But it all depends when and where they're reporting. A lot. It, it's sometimes, it's so subjective when you look at one earnings report or another. For example, you look at LAM Research, right? LAM Research came out, uh, LRCX uh, came out a few days ago. It had a really, really big run. Texas Instruments in the same group doing exactly the same thing, been a long, long, you know, down, uh, been around longer. Stock is getting hit, right? Stock is getting absolutely hit. Uh, you look, for example, uh, names, you know, like Microsoft, right? Microsoft, you knew they were going to have a you know, soft quarter, but the cloud space is kind of frowned upon. You look at Microsoft after the close, it's getting hit. Not exactly the same thing as last quarter uh, for them you know, fighting back, going green, and really, really uh, started you know, taking the market rally back up. Uh, you look at Google, for example, right? Same thing happened last quarter. You had, uh, you know, you, they missed the top, missed the bottom, but what's different, right? Well, what is exactly different? And that's the point. There's nothing different. When you miss top and bottom the previous quarter and you miss top and bottom this quarter, it really does show you, and this is kind of the whole point, it really does show you how earnings are a crapshoot. We don't know. Nobody knows. You could have the earnings right in front of you, right? And they could tell you, this is exactly what we did. We missed on top. We bottom. Maybe they rally, maybe you don't. And again, this is why when people bet uh, into earnings, they're literally taking shots. The same way you would bet on a basketball game, a football game, you don't know, right? Nobody knows. And this is why this is the greatest reality show that's not on television. It's so unpredictable. When you look at the, the majority of other names uh, that reported this evening, you kind of get the same thing. You got Spotify, again, ad space, uh, you know, slowing down as you could possibly imagine. The big winner continues to be Chipotle, right? It feels like Chipotle really does like beat every quarter. It really does. It, it's starting to feel that way. People love the burritos. I, I personally like other uh, places better. Well, at least when I ate 
uh, eight Mexican. Um, like this is a great place by, by us in New Jersey called Tito's Burritos. I think it's a, a, a chain in New Jersey, really good place. But compared to Chipotle, this is fast food. You could you put lipstick on a pig. It is a pig, but hey, the people have spoken. Uh, the stock is definitely surging after hours. So the big test for the bulls tomorrow. And again, we are, you know, we approached six week highs today, right? Both on the QQQs, both on the SPYs, right? Testing the 50 day moving average. And the big winner today was the Russell, the IWM, you know, was surging to the 50-day moving average. Now, the question is, and this is kind of where, where, um, where we're going to get a lot more clues. Well, do the bulls, again, negate bad news? Do they come back? Do the buyers come back and take Microsoft green? Do they take Google green? Texas Instruments, nobody really, you know, it's not going to be a bellwether that if, if the market dies or lives based on their earnings, but it's going to be very, very curious to see if the bulls come back, because if they don't come back, at least now we have a reference point where they got rejected off supply. As you can see, IWM on the 50. So the bulls want to reclaim and go higher. The IWM needs to get above 179. If the spies wants to go higher, right? The spies wants to go higher. We need to reclaim uh, the 50 day moving average, which is roughly which is roughly three, you know, 386, right? 386 on the close as well. And the QQQ, which had a beautiful move, beautiful measure potential move, stopped exactly where we talked about last night in the video, 83, 84. Now it just needs to get above this 85 area so it could start moving back to the 50 day moving average. We're obviously going to get a lot more clues uh, tomorrow during the regular session. Um, and we're going to get a lot more clues tomorrow and uh, tomorrow and uh, Thursday because you're going to get some uh, very, very aggressive earnings out. Tomorrow you got uh, Meta, you got Boeing, uh, you got um, TDOC, NOW, uh, another, uh, another software name, uh, Allergen, Biotech, Seagate. Uh, so you have a good amount, but Thursday is definitely going to be the big one uh, that's going to pretty much determine where our future for the technology names are going to be for the foreseeable future. You got Shopify, Amazon, Apple, Intel, uh, you got Gilead, Pinterest, uh, McDonald's, uh, Caterpillar, got, again, a lot of exposure uh, in China, uh, First Solar, Merck, Philip Morris. So you could see where, you know, we could see where the predominant members for the S&P 500 are reporting and are reporting uh, some pretty mixed results uh, this uh, this week. We'll see, right? We'll see what happens. But tomorrow, again, you'd like to at least give the bulls the benefit of the doubt, right? It, just because the market's been so strong. But again, we're not naive. And I say this uh, every single day. Keep this in mind. Every rally, just like we did here, just like we did here, just like we did here, and now we're doing here. All this is happening below the 50-day moving average. If we get above, right, above 290 on the close, 289 on the close, then the dynamics of every single update completely changes because again, remember the old adage, old, old rule, above the 50 day moving average, positive, right? Below the 50 day moving average, negative for the most part, right? You obviously will have sell-offs, you'll have some rallies, but predominant action, you can see the predominant action is down with some glimpses of hope, predominant action down with glimpses of hope. And this is the opposite on, on to the upside. Predominant action is up, you have a little bit of decline, predominant action up, a little bit of decline, so forth and so on. So that's it. The stage is set for tomorrow. Uh, you have, uh, let's see how Google and Microsoft can uh, potentially negate today's initial earnings reaction. And then tomorrow night we have Meta followed by uh, the Super Bowl of earnings. Uh, very, very aggressive uh, session today. Uh, the pivots were, you know, going just really, really, I mean, as you can imagine, uh, NASDAQ and everything else up 2% 2 plus. Uh, we talked about ISRG last night. Again, it's not going to trade like Netflix, but again, it's a thin trader, but needs to confirm earnings for the next leg up. Uh, 221, 222 needs to build. ISRG went nuts, right? ISRG went nuts, took out the 221 area and just, just kept on going. The pre-market took out 221 and just kept on going and going and going. Uh, really, really big move there. Uh, BIIB, I wasn't even watching. I saw it, I saw it at 277. I kind of lost track. I don't even know what the hell this thing did today. Uh, it looks like it went to 270 and came back. Yeah, I just I just wasn't I wasn't watching that. Um, crowd went nuts. Uh, CRWD 159 needs to build. Here was crowd. 
right? Here was crowd. It took out this whole little baby channel of 59, took out 61 and a half, 62 supply, and went all the way up to about 64, 65. Really, really big move uh, there as well. NVIDIA went also a very strong move. They were right off the gate. They were coming for the 130 weeklies. Uh, 127, 70, 128 needs to build. Here was uh, NVIDIA, right? Here was NVIDIA. Took out this 127.69. We talked about last night's video, uh, last week's high, and went right to uh, 133. I still think if the market confirms, I still probably think it has another two, three points in it before it re reports its earnings itself. Uh, DXCM was a little bit too thin for me. Just went, you know, just trades so wide at the open. Uh, 99 and a half, 100 needs to build. If you if you caught a great job, I I didn't have any. Um, way too thin for me. Uh, so here is the break here. Took out the 99 and a half. Uh, went to 103. Again, I think the big move here is going to be above this 105 uh, and change level. And again, here's my point of what we talk about. We, we Guys, we don't fall in love with stocks, right? I love Tesla long. I love Tesla short. It doesn't make a difference. We fall in love with channels. And here's a perfect example of a two-way play today, right? Sneaky area for experienced traders. If it builds below 208, it can flush, right? That's one side of the market. Then the other side of the market, obviously this one didn't, didn't confirm. So the other side of the market, if it confirms 216 upside could have a dead cat bounce that would take out two days worth of selling. So two ways to play. And that's the whole point. Don't fall in love with the stock, fall in love with the ranges. So here is uh, Tesla, right? Here is Tesla. It took out this 216, 217 level, uh, traded all the way up to 224. If this thing starts building above today's ranges, you could see a move to 230. That was last week's highs. Really nice move on Tesla there as well. Uh, Netflix continues to be Netflix, 291, 292 needs to build. Here was Netflix. Um, Right here was Netflix, took out 91, 92, traded up to almost 98. Uh, nice move there. And I believe, I said, look, sell some 95s. Uh, Microsoft, 251, 234. Obviously, it's trading in the middle of the ranges right now, uh, pre-market. And Google, the same thing. Didn't take out the top of the channel, didn't take out the bottom of the channel. But let's definitely watch uh, Google for tomorrow. Uh, and, you know, both sides to so tomorrow, but especially Google below this. Uh, 97 area if it confirms. So that's it, guys. That's it. Bull market. Uh, bull market continues, right? Bull market. Well, bullish action continues. Let's not let's not lose our minds. Bullish action continues uh, in a bearish cycle below the 50-day moving average. Again, tomorrow it's going to be very very important to see if the bulls can negate Microsoft and Google's earnings, and if they do, then will the bulls will have a little bit better area to start stretching more. Guys, God bless. I wish you all the best, and I'll see you all tomorrow. Take care.